A while ago, I did a video on Tailscale, a new easy to use VPN solution that's pretty easy to set up with no configuration. One of the things that makes Tailscale secure is the reliance of point-to-point -point encryption from its client applications. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to extend that to the next level and reach the rest of your network. If you wanna learn more about how to expand Tailscale beyond your current clients, then stick around and watch the rest of this video. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification so you'll be notified when there's new content. If you've used Tailscale before, then you know it's pretty powerful and pretty easy to use. However, the one downside is that it relies on its client applications to create point-to-point -point encryption connections. One feature they discuss in their documentation is the ability to create a subnet router, which allows you to extend one or more client nodes and connect up to all the devices on that local network, even printers. This feature is in the early phases and it's currently only runs on Linux. However, they'll be adding this feature to Windows and Macs in the near future. With this tutorial, you'll see that it's pretty easy to set up, even if you're like me and you don't know much about Linux. We'll walk through each step and show you how this is set up. A prerequisite to this is that you install a basic Linux distro such as Ubuntu on either a spare system or a VM, which is the option I chose to use. Though you can use any platform to install the VM, I decided to use Unraid and created a Linux VM on my Unraid server. As there are many good tutorials on installing Linux on these various platforms, even a Raspberry Pi, I won't cover the actual Linux install in this video, and we'll focus on installing Tailscale and setting up the subnet router. So what exactly does a subnet router do, and why do you want one? Think of the subnet router much like a standard router. It takes traffic from your Tailscale clients and passes it through to your local network without exposing any of your devices to the internet. Things like NAS units, security camera systems, home automation can now be reached remotely, even if they don't have the Tailscale clients installed on these devices. If we look at the diagram below that's supplied from the Tailscale website, you can see that the devices and their traffic connect to the subnet router and reach your local devices without the need for using the client application. This is extremely powerful and you can increase the flexibility. However, keep in mind that all the clients that connect to that subnet router can also access the rest of your local network. This may not be an issue for you, and there are ways to address this, but it's something that you want, you want to keep in the back of your mind. Doing it this way is effectively like using any other VPN, only faster and more secure. So let's get started with the install. To start with, we're going to have to install the Tailscale app onto our Linux server. To do this, we're going to follow the installation instructions from their website. The first step is to add the Tailscale package signing key and repository by copying each of these lines into the terminal window of our Linux system. When we do this on a fresh system, you're most likely going to get the curl not found error message prompting you with the instructions on how to install it by typing sudo app install curl. Next, we can copy the second line to finish the install of the signing key and repository. The next step is to actually install the client app onto our Linux machine. Again, we do this by copying the two commands into the terminal window, the sudo app get update and the sudo app get install tailscale. The last thing for the initial install is to authenticate the installation. When you do this, you're going to be prompted with this link and you're going to copy the link and paste it into the browser. Once you log in, you'll be prompted that your authorization was successful and you're pretty much done with the installation at Tailscale. The next part of this is a little bit trickier, but we'll walk through each of the steps so it kind of makes some sense. Now that we have our Tailscale installed and authenticated, it's now time to configure the subnet router itself. We need to go back to the terminal window and start or restart Tailscale as a subnet router by pasting this command. However, before we can paste this, we have to modify this statement to match your particular network. In this example, they'll 
they used 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and 10.0.1.0 slash 24 network. But this probably won't match your configuration. In my example, I've changed the command to, to match both of my local networks and used 192.168.0.0 and 192.168.40.0. So as you can see, when I paste this command, I get another error message that states subnet routes won't work until IP forwarding is enabled and sends me off to yet another part of the document that explains how to address this. If we look at the instructions, we'll see that we have to paste in some more commands in, in order to enable IP4 and IP6 forwarding. So going back, we're going to paste each one of these commands into the terminal window. And now you can see from the prompt that IP forwarding has now been enabled. Lastly, we need to go to the admin console and verify, and if necessary, enable the routes. To do this, we're going to log into the admin console, find a Linux machine, and over on the right, click on the triple dots and select Review Route Settings. This will bring up the settings box, and you should now be able to see one or more of the local IP networks that you set up with the earlier command. If they show disabled, you can enable them. As a note, you can enable and disable these as many times as you want. If you did everything right, you should now have a functioning subnet router. The instructions they provide on testing this or verifying that it's actually working didn't work for me. So to prove this out, we're going to test this using a remote client and access devices directly on my local network to make sure they're accessible. So to properly test this, I'm logged into a system I have at work about 50 miles away on a completely different network. And this system has tail scale running. Going to the file explorer, I can type the IP to one of my NAS units, and as you can see, the shared folders instantly show up. So now let's log into my Unraid server using the local IP address. Tailscale is not currently installed on Unraid, and we're only accessing it through the local IP address. And as you can see, I'm able to access it, and the interface comes up, and I can control it just like if I was sitting in front of it. Lastly, let's use the browser and see if I can access the admin screen of my NAS unit. Again, everything is accessible just if I was in, on the local network. To prove there's not any other dynamics going on and that my local network is still secure, let's log back into the Tailscale admin console and let's temporarily disable the subnet route that we set up earlier and see if we can still access the devices that are on the local network. We'll click on the triple dots and disable access to the main network. Now let's go back to the file explorer and try to access one of the NAS units to see if, it, if we can still access it. And with the subnet disabled, you can see that the NAS is no longer available. Just to be consistent, let's try and access Unraid. And as expected, that's not available either. And lastly, let's access the NAS interface. And it's not a surprise that that's not available either. Given that Tailscale creates an extended network that's always live, Using the subrouter solution really fixes everything for me. Things like NAS access, using utilities like QSync, QFile, access to my security cameras, home automation, and pretty much everything on my network is really a lifesaver for me. Devices like NAS units and Unraid don't need to be directly connected for anything, and they all work just like if I was on the local network. The speed, the security, and the simplicity once you get it set up is truly outstanding. I've been looking for a painless solution like this for a long time, and now that I have it, I use it every single day. I know it seems like quite a few steps to get it set up, and hopefully in the near future they'll add that capabilities to the Windows or Mac to truly simplify it and make it a little easier for everybody to use. But I think under the right conditions, this is a really powerful and can really open up the flexibility of Tailscale. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.